this patient who had that uh, stress of the exam now she is having wheeze recently she had migraine so what's the most likely possibility for the worsening of her uh, wheeze um, among these drugs it is the propranolol the beta blocker which lead to development of the bronchoconstriction which is responsible for the um, asthmatic tendency of the patient is what you need to basically remember a 28 year old woman has palpitations that occur approximately once a week the thyroid gland is very firm there is a mid systolic click at the apex which is a grade 2 by 6 early systolic murmur at the upper left sternal border there is a sinus tachycardia so uh, she is having dyspnea so what how do you want to manage this scenario whenever patient is having sinus tachycardia murmurs there is a hyperdynamic circulation so what are all the causes for the development of hyperdynamic circulation doc phagets very good aortic regurgitation similarly hyperthyroidism pregnancy very very pyrotoxicosis so these are all considered to be the clinical scenarios of hyperdynamic circulation which you need to basically remember a study is conducted to assess the benefits of a new drug to reduce the recurrence of the colonic polyps the results show a number needed to treat nnt is 16 so what is the meaning of nnt is a very important question how many patients must be exposed to the treatment in order to discover the response suppose if five patients you tried no response does it mean that the drug is not useful no so every clinical investigator will set up a particular number before eliciting a response whenever a drug therapy is being given so number needed to treat is the name given for that so sometimes what happens is uh, and another what is the advantage of this is you have a data from different trials you want to combine and merge all these trials so this nnt is very very important but if the drug is leading to any adverse effect unfortunately nnt become nnh the number needed to harm so that is very very important so nnt of 16 means for every 16 patients treated one will get benefited by the taking of this new drug is what you have to basically remember a previously healthy 57 year old woman comes to the physician she has avoided the sun for the past 10 years she notes that her skin has never tanned but always burned and freckle when exposed to the sun <clears throat> and she finds this lesion nearer to her nipple so looking at the appearance of the lesion what is the most likely possibility that this lesion could be is a very important question of the exam so it is a melanoma a flat brown lesion mottled with deep purple and black areas with an irregular border is a classical description <coughs> of melanoma two days after receiving three units of packed red blood cells for a postpartum hemorrhage a 24 year old woman <coughs> has pretty slight jaundice hemoglobin is 8.8 .8. liver tests are otherwise normal serum bilirubin is 5 how do you want to evaluate her the next important step in the management of uh, a hemolytic uh, anemia so always you should uh, conclude whether it is autoimmune or not autoimmune that's the reason you need to do direct and indirect anti-globulin tests as a first step in evaluating a case of hemolysis that has started postpartum is what you have to remember a 30 year old 
has nausea, vomiting, colicky, right flank pain. Urine analysis shows RBCs, which are too numerous to count and no bacteria. Then what is the most likely cause for this? Whenever renal stone is there, typically it leads to the erosion of the mucosa and lead to development of hematuria. So isolated hematuria without bacteria. Wherever hematuria is there, possibility is there could be a urinary tract infection, cystitis, pyelonephritis, etc. But there you will have the organisms also positive. But in her case, only hematuria, isolated hematuria is there. So that's the reason it's more likely to be urolithiasis. A 66-year-old woman comes to the emergency, her JVP is elevated, there is a tricuspid regurgitation murmur and the ECG is showing the ST segment elevation in the right precordial leads V1, V2 typically which is a case of anterior, uh, I mean uh, is a case of the myocardial infarction. So you should suspect the right ventricular infarction where the right precordial leads V1, V2 are the right precordial leads, V5, V6 are left precordial leads and V3, V4 are septal as all of you know very well. A 20 year old